Some people thought we were crazy. Why would you want to paint the grain elevator? There isn't a day that goes by that somebody doesn't stop and say, wow, look at that. I'm Jody Moritz, and I am president of the Falk County Historical Society and the Falkton Area Arts Council. You know, we have this history of art in our community because the first mural was in our courthouse, the courtroom murals that our county commissioners paid a local artist in 1905. So I think we have this basis of, of art in our community. One big project after the other is what it seems like. One opportunity comes along, just like the new library mural. They're moving to the new building, and we said, oh, you know, wouldn't that look nice to have a really nice mural there? the courthouse murals. We have the community mural inside the carousel cover. We have a quilter's corner mural. We had the last wild buffalo hunt mural. And then we have the elevator mural. The idea came and the Arts Council said, yeah, sure, it's a good idea, but we need help. The community all got behind it. The mayor got behind it, and the city council, and the development board, just watching to see what was gonna happen. One of the things that the mayor said when his children were watching this mural be painted, they'll never remember that it wasn't just a grain elevator, that it wasn't a mural. And now it's a piece of art, and that's the way the kids are always gonna remember it. Cool. That's such a great. That's such a great piece. Um, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> well, uh, well, thank you all so much for for being here with us today. Um, for those of you watching, we have Jody Moritz from the Falkton Area Arts Council, uh, the filmmaker Dalton Coffee, and then Zach DeBoer, who was uh, one of the mural artists uh, featured in the piece. Uh, thank you all so much for being here today. Really excited to have a little conversation about the about the film that we just watched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So, so Jody, you know, what did you think when you first saw the finished piece? You know, I mean, you, you had been around the filming, Dalton had come, you know, the Zach had just been working on the new mural on the library, and there was a lot going on. And, you know, it's kind of like they work in the, uh, uh, the lab, and then all of a sudden you come out and you see the final piece, you know, so what was it like to see that after all that time? It was kind of one of those wow moments. Um, I thought, oh, it, oh, it's so perfect. It just was everything that we dreamed it could be. Thank was there anything <laughs> was there anything that kind of surprised you? Anything that you thought, you know, wow, I didn't I didn't know that that was something that people would be interested in or, you know, some piece about the film that really jumped out at you? Or was it just kind of a wow that that really told our story well? I think it really just told our story well. I, I just you know, and it's so nice to get the story out there because, you know, we're such a small group and people just don't know we're out here sometimes, you know, and it's just like the people that drive through on their way, all of a sudden see that mural and then it's wow. And, you know, didn't know anything like that existed. Yeah, well, well, Dalton, then, you know, along with that, I'll, I'll ask Dalton first and then Zach, but, you know, kind of what was it like the first time you drove into Falkton and, and saw, you know, A, you see the giant grain elevator mural, but then you start to see, wow, this, this whole community has murals everywhere and it's kind of a, an art-centric rural community. You know, what was it like for you as you first came into town? Uh, well, as you said, obviously the the... The, the grain elevator is the big, the big thing that catches you. And I knew that was coming. I was, you know, I had done research and uh, of course I've heard about it and I, I was expecting it. And even still, it was like, oh my gosh. And we stopped at it on the, we were on our way to, we were supposed to uh, go set up to interview uh, Jody. And uh, we just stopped right away. And we're like, we just gotta, we gotta try to get some, we gotta take this in right now. <laughs> and so we were pressing our uh, time a little bit, but, um, yeah, I think uh, 
obviously there was this, since I hadn't been there before, there was that sense of, I use the word discovery a lot, the sense of discovery to get in there. And the further you get in there, the more you find this, these things that are um, on display, but yet at the same time kind of hidden. And there was another, there was another shoot that we had that we were going to also. And so like, it was kind of a thing where it was a scheduling thing where I had to schedule to come in to Fulton and go, oh, let's come in here for this day and then do this. And uh, in a way that seemed sort of sacrilegious because it was like, this is a des I felt like it was a destination place. And because of scheduling for my work, I had to use it as a on the way kind of a place. And, um, uh, but it, it absolutely is so much more than that. And I think uh, Zach, I think probably spent a lot more time in, you know, Fulton and a lot more time getting to know those people. I wish I could have done that. I came in and I, you know, I did the research ahead of time and I come in and I, I you know, I had a great conversation with Jody and, and asked a lot of, uh, you know, questions, but, um, you know, I wish I could have, I wish I could have spent more time there to sort of craft a piece, you know, whenever you see these murals, what the video that I did is nothing like what the murals are. Those are a collective, I think of, uh, of sort of the, 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 the vibe of the town, the energy, sort of the spirit of that community. And uh, so, I mean, I think obviously Zach would be able to speak on that a little bit more, but. Yeah, and actually, Zach, uh, so, you know, for you, what was it like coming into town? But then also, you know, your your piece on the library really did tie to the community. You know, it was, it referenced the um, the carousel, which is both an important piece in the community, as well as having murals of its own, as we saw in the video. And, you know, so, so what was it like for you being embedded in the town and um, on the front end of it, you know, getting the call from um, from the community to come in and do this piece and, and kind of come and join with them for a while in town. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, it was wonderful. I mean, I, I loved my time in Falkton. Um, you know, first time driving into town, you, you can see that grain elevator from, from the miles away. Um, you know, it reminds me of Disney World, really. You know, from far away, you can see that castle off in the distance and you're kind of, you know, drawn and attracted to it. So, um, you know, what, I mean, what a, what a marker for, for a town, um, you know, in the middle of South Dakota, in the middle of the plains, you just have this, you know, massive piece of artwork. I, and, and I don't know, have you done the measurements? Is it tall? I mean, how tall is Mount Rushmore? Which, which is the tallest piece of, taller piece of art? Um, I'd be curious. Um, it's third. It's, it's third? third. Oh, okay. There it is. She's done the work. <laughs> Wait, so our number one, is it Mount Rushmore? Mount Rushmore and then Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse and then fun, then you guys. All right. Yes. Great. So we'll say biggest painting in the state, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, phenomenal. I, 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 you know, I've, I've been painting uh, murals more and more in some of these smaller communities across the state and even in Sioux Falls here. But, um, you know, I don't often get a chance to really kind of embed myself like I did in Falkton. You know, it, it, it's, um, it's about three hours away from home. So that meant a couple of different overnights uh, over different weeks. And, um, you know, it was... Uh, luckily enough to have a, someone had a, uh, a spare house for me to use while I was there. So I really did get a feel like I was, um, you know, uh, living in Falkton for a while. So it, it, I mean, wonderful. Um, and I, I think kind of, um, an essential piece of, of, uh, ensuring that you make a, a piece of art that will resonate with people too. Um, and I also had the chance with, with our mural, we kicked it off. Day one was, uh, Wild West days. Uh, which is, you know, the big, the big summer celebration in Falkton and there's a parade and we started off uh, by having the community just toss paint up on that mural to start with. So, um, you know, that was also a lot of fun having the, uh, the kids and adults uh, splatter and paint and spray paint up on that wall first too. So everyone had a chance to put their mark on it. Yeah, great, great. I, um, you know, we had kind of a, a, a similar experience when uh, um, Art South Dakota uh, came in and did a uh, an Arts Happy Hour along with the Falkton mm -hmm. Area Arts Council. And, uh, you know, I think what struck me is is not just how creative the community was, but how um, how curious a lot of people were. You know, we didn't have just the the mainstay arts folks that came to the arts happy hour you know we had a, a a wider variety of community members show up to kind of see hey what's what's this about what's going on what's been happening and, and i know that from the inside of the community sometimes it probably feels a lot more um oh 
not like pulling teeth, but I'm sure it's always hard to get everybody on the same page. But from the outside, it really did seem like the community comes together and is is really supportive um, of what goes on in the town. Um, you know, so along with that, Jody, you know, I, I love the way you started you know, the way Dalton started the whole piece with, with your quote of, you know, some people thought we were crazy. Um, and, you know, that that's always going to be the case. But, you know, you also, this all kind of started with those 1905 murals in the courthouse. Um, so kind of what, beyond just the Grain Elevator project and then the later mural projects, what really kind of um, inspired you to start these new murals after that kind of historical basis in the, in the town? Well, in, when Flockton was getting ready to celebrate its 100th anniversary, that's when we did the, the mural that is now inside the carousel cover. Originally, it was on the wall where the Quilter's Corner mural is, but it wasn't painted with good mural paint. And by 1989, when South Dakota had its centennial, it was fading. So we decided that we should have it repainted and we had the plans and so we just moved it inside as the carousel cover was built, moved it in there. And again, um, the artist came and the kids did it, you know, following her instructions. It was kind of a paint by number. And so, you know, it was an artist in residence program. So then after we did that one, and then, you know, then we decided, well, that quilter's corner looked awful because it kind of was painted over. And so the, when we contacted Altman Studney, he said, well, you can get this really good mural paint and you have to order it from California. So we did. And, and so we painted it white and then, yeah, then the kids, you know, we came up with a, a plan. It was a student at Falkton High School who came up with the, the quilts on the, hanging on the clothesline. That was her idea. And so then we just kind of did it and she came and she signed it too. Of course, she was a senior by that time. And, and, you know, the kids all came and from, they would come during one period of school and come down and paint for the 45 minutes and then go back and, you know, did that for two weeks. And, you know, and that we only actually did um, up to the door. And so then he came back two years later and that's when we put the barn on and then the door is painted over. So the actual door to the building looks like it's the door into the little shed there. So yeah, yeah. So that's great how it's, yeah, it's all incorporated. Had a different I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. I'd yeah. like, you know, I walked by it a million times. I didn't even notice that. I thought it was just a door in the painting. I never looked close enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's a good thing it wasn't like the Wiley e. Coyote where, you know, like the fake, uh, the fake road through the hill. <laughs> Um, so then, Jody, you know, you've all of these projects, you talk so much about the partnerships, you know, it was, you know, partnering with the with the school, partnering with the um, the mayor, the the economic development groups, you know, kind of everything with the grain elevator, even partnering with the um, um, the, the, the gentleman in town that installs security cameras and he took the really cool long time lapse uh, stuff. But. You know, because the other the other thing that struck me in the piece was when you said that um, there was a great opportunity, but we knew we needed help. You know, we knew we couldn't do this alone. So how do you start that conversation? You know, how do you get that ball rolling to create those relationships and collaborations? Um, well, I think first what happened was, you know, the idea came to paint the mural from Ozzy Dave, who has the... Um, retail center in Falkton and is Australian. And his parents had seen what Guido had done in Australia. And when his dad came into town and saw the elevator, he said, you know, maybe you could do that. So he contacted Guido, who happened to be in Florida at the time, and he drove up. And so um, the Arts Council board met with Guido and Ozzy Dave and, you know, yeah, it's a great idea, you know, and, you know, kind of get a feel of what's going on, but, you know, how much is this going to cost? And, you know, then we're going, oh, you know, we, we've got to have help. So, you know, we went to the development board and, you know, they have the Snake Creek 501 C3. And so then we just kind of started the fundraising from there and everybody just got on board. Just, just the pieces just fell into place. And um, the, Troy Hadrick is the chairman of the development board and his wife Stacy wrote the grant for the arts 
council. She also wrote Run for Farmers Union, you know, just to help fund it. So it was just everybody putting in a little bit and it worked out. So. Yeah, I, li- I like that idea of everyone putting in a little bit and, and kind of coming together to make it happen mm-hmm. and how, you know, one thing in, in small communities is is uh, sometimes one thing that can help us is that everyone kind of knows everybody. And so you, you have some pre-existing relationship. You know, I think in some of our larger communities, people go, well, I don't even know you know, I don't even know how to go talk to the mayor. And, and in, in other communities, it's like, well, no, that's, I mean, he's right there. I can, I can go talk to him anytime uh, and at least get that dialogue started. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Dalton, um, you know, the, this piece that, that everyone just watched, it's, it's filmed really well. It's, it's a compelling story. And I know really your, your focus is on story, um, but the, the, the technique of the filmmaking really does help tell that story. You know, was there anything kind of um, special about this piece, anything with some of that aerial photography or with the time lapse of Zach uh, painting the mural? Um, you know, I, I also think that the music really matches quite well and, and helps tell the story. You know, so is there anything there that, that was exciting as a filmmaker on, on that uh, technical side? Uh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's a lot of, uh, this, this, because of the nature of, of what this was and, um, just to try to get the scope or rather the lack thereof, it's sort of like, no, this is a, this is a smaller community, but look at what they have. We had to get up in the air. I mean, we always knew that. And we're not the first ones to fly a drone around the grain elevator, of course, but, um, no, that was definitely something. And I'm not usually, I don't usually like to do, uh, drone stuff. Um, just because it, it feels, if I do, I use it very sparingly, um, and then it's a little bit more effective. Um, so th- I think that the, the biggest challenge is trying to find that balance of not trying to put too much of it in there. That's just for me personally on a technical level to try to tell the story and not get too distracting or like you know, gimmicky. Um, but uh, it felt it felt right uh, to me. And uh, the the uh, the time lapse stuff that was that was all Zach. He he had set up I think an iPhone or an iPad or something and filmed uh that that was all him filming uh that time lapse so, so he emailed me that file um but it was great that he was super i mean before i even asked for it which i was gonna <laughs> he offered it he offered it up and said hey i can send this to you if you want so um i was just i just, I just needed all that work to be worth it you know <laughs> it's a real pain set if, if that can give my video a little more legs go for it <laughs> yeah, exactly that's very yeah time lapse is always super time consuming and um, so, yeah, that was, that was obviously really, really helpful. But I think some of it too is just because of, because of time constraints or budget constraints uh, be, in, in my line of work, I don't always get to spend as much time in places like this as I'd like to. So I try to ask the right questions. I try to, to, to go and visit every little corner that I can. And I try to visit every corner I can even before I ask questions. So I know, you know, in context, what to ask questions about things that I've seen maybe. But in, 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 in this sense, it's, it's a very much a, I discover a lot of stuff, there's that word again, it's, it, it, when I'm bringing back, I come, I come out of there with this footage under my arm. And then during the edit process, that's when I start to find this story. And it, cause it's always there, it's there. I mean, especially, you know, when you've got somebody like Jody who knows the history and is obviously so uh, heavily involved in all of this, it's all there. Um, and luckily for me, I think I asked the right questions, but um, that, that I think is probably the, uh, the most fun is when you realize, oh my gosh, all this stuff is clicking into place and like, oh, there, there's, there's a, <laughs> there's, there's a perfect setup for this and there's a perfect setup for this. And she said this, and she said this, and, uh, the, I, I edit a lot of, a lot of the stuff that I do, I edit with music. Um, so finding the right, either writing the right music track or, or finding and licensing the right track. Is very important. I think everything I like to feel like everything's got a rhythm to it, and uh, I, 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 I very important to me rhythm. I mean, being a musician and stuff myself, it, it, uh, it pacing and a rhythm to a piece is very important. So I would say that that's probably almost the, the highest priority for me is finding the right music track, and then everything else is kind of secondary. You know, that music, uh, you know, uh, stories probably above music. I think I would do that, and then and then music and a lot of stuff. Um, and, uh, if I have time to plan visual stuff, that's great, but I don't always have time to plan things. It's very instinctual, which is also a lot of fun because again, there's that sense of discovery. I don't always know what I have until I get back home. And then I start looking through it and I go, oh my gosh, this is, this is great. So, and a lot of drone stuff, if anybody has flown it, you know that you don't really know what you have 
until, <laughs> until you get back. And then you realize, oh yeah, and of, of 25 minutes of footage, uh, you maybe have a useful 30 seconds, but sometimes that's all you need. Great. Well, I, I kind of have one one sort of last question to, to go around the circle with, uh, and, and Jody, I'll have kind of a, a double question for you, but, but maybe starting with Zach, um, you know, we're all from different communities, some rural, some a little less rural, but we've all spent a lot of time in, in rural communities and been, been working to support the arts across South Dakota. You know, so Zach, in, in your mind, kind of how have you seen the arts be critical to the quality of life in some of the rural communities you've worked in and you know, and, and kind of what do you think might be lost from your perspective if these communities um, um, didn't have a supported arts world? I think ultimately when, when we talk about public art or, or, or art making, we're, we're, you know, like Dalton said, we're talking about storytelling um, and, uh, and, and kind of creating a sense of place. Um, and I think especially in rural uh, America right now, we have, you know, shrinking and disappearing uh, rural communities. And, and, and that can happen for a variety of reasons. Um, but as, as time goes on and, and things like remote work become more and more common and people are now able to choose where they live uh, or choose where they want to live rather than choose where a job is and then live there. Um, things like placemaking and, and kind of creating places that people love is, is becoming more and more important. Um, you know, you could you know, throw somebody down in any small town in South Dakota uh, and unless, if they didn't have pieces of public art or uh, unique things like that, it, you could be anywhere. But uh, I, I think you'd be very hard pressed to, you know, plop somebody down on Main Street Falkton and not have them know where they are uh, now, especially. Uh, and, and things like, you know, art, ultimately, yeah, art, art is that storytelling piece. Art is that thing that uh, can, can uh, you know, make that high school kid who was, uh, you know, helped come paint the mural, you know, really, truly care and love that mural and therefore love that town. You know, it's a, it's a piece uh, that uh, will always kind of connect them uh, and, and might be the thing that makes them stay or makes them come back or, or makes them uh, invest in that community more. Yeah, great. I, um, um, I, I used to work with a film production company, uh, Passenger Productions, and we, we stole this from one of the film investors on a project. But, you know, he said when the, when the stories, the only stories you're hearing are told about elsewhere, you think that life only is lived elsewhere, you know? And so I think that that's another big thing is, is telling these stories and, and embedding it in the arts of a community to, to create that identity is a really important thing so that people can put themselves into that story and see them living there and continuing to, to kind of expand on that story. Um, so, so Dalton, how about from your perspective with a little bit of time in town? Um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I definitely would echo a lot of what Zach was saying. And the, 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 what's interesting, I think, about rural communities and rural art, whenever they get behind it like this, is that it's definitely the entire community. I think in bigger cities, you have more of a, there's more of a, uh, a risk of siloed sort of uh, pockets of art. I mean, it's all still there, but it's very, whereas this is like, no, it's the whole community. It's this whole town. <laughs> And uh, there's there's a lot there's a lot to uh, obviously using art art in any form to help tell a story and help tell your story or your community story or to help ours yours mine everything, art can uh, you know it can help you to to understand something it can help you to be understood all of that stuff and it's it's sort of uh, it's a uh, um, I don't know I I find the the spirit of rural communities that are getting behind art just it feels so much different to me I, I it feels bigger to me and it feels bigger to me than if I see this stuff in big cities I love murals on the side of any any building no matter how big but for some reason this just strikes me so much more and murals that uh, you know are, are there's a lot of different art forms and you know here we're talking about murals specifically but obviously there's 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 more to fault in I think than that and I, I know that there is but that's a great way because the 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 uh the community can get behind that and the community is saying no what do we have here what's our what's our skyline any piece of land or any building that touches sky you've got a skyline and what's our what's our skyline what are our buildings what are the what is the architecture let's use it all and uh, and i think that's great i mean the fact that you have murals on on you have murals on murals in a sense you have murals on things 
there's the carousel mural. It's a carousel in and of itself is like, wow, look at that. But then there's a mural inside of that. And uh, it's just, there, there's, 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 it's so complex and there's so many layers to it. And I think that that's just a good metaphor for how art is. And I think especially in rural communities where I feel like this stuff is, is, is struggling, but it's there. It, it, it's, it's there and, and hopefully the, the communities will you know, start to get behind that a little more and see things like Fulton, what, what they're doing. Yeah, I, I like that too of, of using, seeing opportunities where other people see problems, you know, instead of seeing the, the, the side of a, of a grain elevator as a boy, you'd come into town and all you see is the side of this blank building and like we need to do something that. else around it. We need to, no, just use it, you know, make yeah, that, you know, take what you have and, and use anything as an opportunity. And I think that's one thing the arts can do so well is that we're um, all of the arts half they're, they're trained creative problem solvers and and the more we can combine that with other you know other issues in our communities the more we can come up with new creative uh solutions to things um so jody how about you you know how how have you seen uh falkton be affected by you know especially the recent upsurge but just in general you know how have the arts been critical to the quality of life and, and to the community it definitely is, but I, I wanted to tell Zach that at two of the seniors in our cl senior class this year had some of their graduation pictures taken at his mural. They used the carousel horses as the background, and they're really neat pictures. You know? and Great. About something that's going to be there, you know, <laughs> in their senior album forever. And I think more that of that will happen, you know, in the future. You know, uh, and I know some of the kids do that at the quilters corner as well it's just i'd be lying if i said that wasn't one of my major goals i needed yeah. senior pictures taken in front of this thing that's when i knew i'd be successful yeah <laughs> that's when you know the mural works if 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 gen z is taking selfies in front of it then you've succeeded right right absolutely um you know and we've seen an economic impact of course COVID has really hurt us this year but prior to that you know there was so much more traffic in town people just coming to see the murals and you know they were driving up and down the main street and you know and around by the carousel and stopping and riding and you know it really was having a big economic impact you know we could tell the difference at um the retail center and at the gas station um, um, and at the cafe, it just really was making a difference. And then COVID hit and it's kind of, there's still some people coming, but just not as many right now, but it really did make an Im impact economically. Yeah, well, we definitely, definitely urge everyone watching to to take the road trip and and you know get uh, uh, get off the roads you're used to driving instead of just hitting the two interstates. Try taking a couple of highways and and find some of these really just beautiful communities that are that are all over South Dakota. I mean, you know, I, I, we are I'm, planning another mural. So oh, great. When is uh, yeah, what's the rough summer. timeline on that? Next, next summer. summer. Great. Yeah. And, you know, and as you're as you're going through to the to the state fair in Huron, as you're driving anywhere in the state, you know, definitely swing through Falkton and 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 spend a little time and get to know the community and, and get to know a lot of these really wonderful communities all throughout South Dakota. I mean, I'm constantly um, not even surprised is the right word because it's something we know, but I just spending time in all these communities. It's just there's so much wonderful creativity happening all throughout South Dakota and there's a lot more there's a lot more art artists performances and you know creativity than than a lot of us realize kind of embedded in all of these communities so um, well, just thank you all so much again. Thank you, Jody, with, with Falkton Area Arts Council. Thank you, Dalton Coffee and Zach DeBoer. You know, it's been really great to have a little bit of a conversation today and uh, really excited for, for everyone to get to, to watch this film and to, to see uh, uh, the rest of the series coming out uh, in the next couple of months that Dalton's been working on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And it was thank great you. to... Great to have Zach's daughter on too. She looks like she's been enjoying the nice day. She sure has. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all so much. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot. Good seeing you, Jody. Dalton. See you later, Zach. See ya. Bye-bye.